channel, guys. Get this camera set. Is that set? Uh, that's good enough. What's up? Ah, Seatbelts first. Safety first. Always sport mode. That's more like it. And you gotta do that just for fun. I mean, I mean, it's an LC 500. You gotta do that. I mean, how many cars can you do that to? It's kind of a novelty, but it's, it's cool. It's fun. In this video, we're gonna talk about the LC 500. I know, I know. That was, uh, you weren't expecting that, were you? You're probably gonna have me talk about a Ford F-250, but no, we're talking about the LC500. And later on, I'm going to share some news that I think I'm gonna do here, like, really, really soon. And that's start a second YouTube channel, and I'll explain what that second channel is going to be after this. A lot of content this week has been out around the 2024 LC500. You're gonna see these like big car YouTubers. We're given an LC500 as basically a loner. They get to drive it around for like 24 hours and then they make their video talking about how awesome the car is. Well, I'm gonna tell you, as an owner perspective, I've had the LC500 for almost exactly one year now. I daily drive this car. I drive this car every single day. I take my daughter to school. I take this to work. I go to car shows. I go to car events. I go everywhere in this car. I have a 2018 and I now have 54,000 miles on my LC500. For Lexus, you might be thinking, man, that's nothing. You, you barely broke this car in. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you're exactly right. That's why I bought this Lexus. If you want a good ownership perspective of this car, you need to watch this channel because I'm always gonna be putting out more info regarding the LC500 and my ownership experience. I'm not getting rid of this car. I, anytime I come across something that might be an issue or something going on with this car, then I'm gonna post about it and I will let you guys know, hey, or is anybody else dealing with this? Because, you know, I have a 2018 model. 2018 is the first year this is available in the US and you will always hear people saying, don't ever buy the first year model of any new car because you know they're sometimes they're still trying to figure out little issues the later years they they kind of reworked and twerk twerked <laughs> they twerked <laughs> they reworked and tweaked uh, some different things on the car but with my experience my ownership I bought this car used man this car had 34,000 miles on it when I bought it no warranty like this I have no warranty on this car manufacturer warranties out I don't even have extended warranty on this car because I have faith in this Lexus what I am doing is I'm not just keeping my Lexus stock either. I am modifying my Lexus over time. It's not happening overnight. I'm not one of these car YouTubers where I just got, you know, thousands of dollars sitting there and I'm buying all this stuff literally in one weekend and doing it. I'm like a normal guy like a lot of you others are where you have to, you know, if I want to do something this car, I got to save up. I got to get it in little increments. My goals for this LC500 are actually really big. Like I, I still think my LC is still very conservative. It's very clean. I get told all the time, I mean all the time, everywhere I go, somebody's coming up telling me this is the cleanest LC, or this is the cleanest Lexus they've ever seen. Uh, so I appreciate that. And I like to keep it, you know, this having this nice clean look, but I do want to go a little bit more extreme sometime here throughout this year, this next, the, the journey of next year. We're going to go pretty extreme with this thing. Let's go back to the 2024 LC500. To my knowledge, the only thing different between this LC, the 2018 and the 2024, the, the biggest difference, it's got the same engine. It's a V8, naturally aspirated. It's, it's the same car, except they fine-tuned some of the stuff, like the transmission. Both have a 10-speed transmission. The shifting points on the 2024, it's just, they made it smoother. And I believe they even made the transmission smoother on the 2019s and up. 
So I don't even know if there's any difference between the 2019 to 2024 with the transmission. But the 2018 is a little bit rougher, but I don't think, you know, for what I love about this car, and I still, for a GT, a Grand Touring car, I don't mind this being a little bit rougher, because a little bit rougher feels sportier. And I, I enjoy a sporty feeling GT car. So I don't mind, I've, I, I've never felt this transmission in this car being rough. Other than that, I've had nothing major uh, with this car. Then you can see my car's a little bit bouncier because I do have lowering springs on it. Um, I will get rid of these lowering springs. And I've said in the last video, uh, or a couple videos ago, that if, if I was to do it all over again, don't get the lowering springs. Go ahead and just get the, spend a little bit more and get the uh, adjustable coilovers from RSR or somebody else. But just don't put lowering springs on this car because it is just, I think it does kind of hinder uh, factory struts on this car because I had to replace one strut before I had my springs put on. I already had a strut going out. But now that I feel like I put the springs on this, car I feel like all the struts now might be going out sooner that's why I do need to do something with get with the exhaust I mean exhaust I do need to do something with the suspension pretty quick and uh, as I mentioned before put an air suspension on here or doing uh, adjustable coilovers that's not really what this video is about this video is just about the LC 500 in general the 2024 this one as far as anything else goes on this car I don't see I haven't seen any big changes besides the uh, exterior wise. It's got little molded canards in the front bumper. Personally, I don't really like it. It's almost like it's they went to, I don't know. It's like if you're going to do it, and I, and I know this car is a little bit different because you're going to see old people driving this car. This car is like a Japanese Corvette. That's the best way I could describe it. This jar, this the LC500 is like a Japanese Corvette. It looks beautiful. It's got some performance, but at the same time, somebody like me, like I love the looks of this car, and I I see the potential, and I've you know to where I'm looking to even like push the boundaries. I want to go further and really make this car, like whoa. So yeah, it's like a it's it's like a Japanese version of a Corvette, is what I'm noticing here. It doesn't have the history as the Corvette does, but you, you do see a lot of old people driving this car. As you can see here, if we're moving into the interior of the car, um, I just think it's it's a beautiful. This is a nice interior. I mean, it really is. From everything the the uh, materials. I mean, Alcantara in the panel, the, the pillars over here, the seat, the roof is Alcantara. Um, and I do have on mine, I got the solid glass roof. I don't have the carbon fiber. I actually love the solid glass roof. And I really like it. I like this solid glass roof. My windshield is so dirty right now. I do need to wash the car today. Um, I wash my car every week. Let's see. If you notice on here, I do have my TPMS sensor on. That's because when they did my wheels, they put the wrong TPMS sensors. So um, I gotta get that changed out. I just haven't yet. Everything else about the car, I mean, it's flawless. It's a little dirty, but it is flawless. Um, I love the red in here. It's not bright red. This is more like a wine color. It's almost like a, it's, it's like, it's like Merlot. It's like, a, it's like a nice, beautiful wine color, which at first I wasn't really fond of it, to be honest with you. I really wanted all black, but then when I did see this red interior in person, when I was looked online, I was like, eh, I don't really like it that much. Um, and then when I saw it in person, I was like, you know, I actually do like this. It is very tasteful. And uh, if it was bright red, like the IS500s, the other Lexus, I think it would lose its classy appeal. It's dark red, that kind of just had this feeling like, like red wine. It just works. It, it, wor it works really, really well with this interior to where it feels classy, but not, you know, and still sporty, but not like too, um, you know, I don't know, too flashy, I guess you could say. The back seat, love the back seat. 
And that was a huge reason why I got this car over a lot of the other cars I was looking at. I mean, over the Supras, over um, any other cars that I was looking at because I needed to have a back seat. Now, how useful is this back seat? Not very useful. It's great for emergencies, and that was just my only intention. If I had to pick up my kids, I have teenagers, if I had to go pick them up, you know, they could fit back there. Somebody could fit back there. I've taken my, my daughter's actually sat back there a couple of times. The only issue she has is actually bumping her head on the back glass if you hit a bump. So you kind of have to slouch down a little bit, but it's, but if you're in a pinch, it's perfect. Like it's, you have a back seat to put somebody in. Smaller kids will have no problem. The leg room is not an issue too, because there is, you know, when you have the seat when you're driving, the seat is like all the way back touching it, but you have, I mean, if you have to you could pull your seat forward and still drive unless you're you know probably six foot five or something which I'm not it's really not a problem gets the job done I hear a lot about the infotainment system on this car man I have no problem with it it was just a little weird at first when you are using this because you know you're having to your your the trackpad and all that stuff and you can see there the trackpad moves around I, I it was just weird at first, but now I actually like it. Like it's, I just sit here, I like, I, everything here feels very ergonomically right. So I, you do have to kind of take your eyes off the, while you're driving to look at the screen to see where the cursor's at, which is the really the only downfall is that you do sometimes have to take your eyes off. but. Just be smart. Don't do it while you're obviously in traffic or you're going head on or something. Just like if you're going to change channels, change channels is no big deal. You actually have the knob, the tune knob, and you can just like slide it. You just roll it up and roll it down. That's no problem. But if you are just trying to search around, just don't be a dumbass and do it when there's no cars around and you're not going to hit something. I mean, common sense has got to come into play here. So other than, you know, it's no problem. What in the Sam Hill is this? That's when you know what's up when you have a cannon and a skeleton outside your house. Okay, let's do a little quick walk around. And my, my LC500 is lowered. I do have the 22s on it. Uh, and uh, NIA Mia body kit. And that's it. So it looks very clean. Not a much, put, not a whole lot put into it but it's very clean, super sleek, and I get asked all the time, oh, what kind of Lexus this is? People just like don't see them. What is this creepy thing? What is this creepy thing with the eggs and the rooster? Where am I? Hi. Hi, boss. Hi. What's up, buddy? Hi. You do need to go wash it though. Look at it. It's just from the look at stormy thing we that. had the other day. Yeah. Because I took it up and got it washed. I don't know why I take it anywhere and get it washed because it doesn't take two minutes to wash it. Yeah, so it's such a pretty car. And then you got your uh, Jaguar sitting on airbags. Yeah. That is on airbags, isn't it? Like from the factory, air suspension. I can't jump it. <laughs> When's the last time y'all drove this? Uh, it's been, what, five years? <laughs> All right, girl. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, now we had to switch vehicles. I'm now in, I had to go borrow my dad's truck because I don't have a truck. I used to have a truck. I used to have, uh, I had a Raptor. I had a 2017 Raptor at one time. I actually had a 2012 Raptor. Love that truck. I never have like multiple cars. I have one car that I love and I drive the crap out of it. So that's what I love about my LC right now because I drive the crap out of that car and I love it. And I got no issues, no regrets, not one bit. But I ended up selling my Jeep and I bought a 2017 Ford Raptor and I love that truck that was a I never had an issue with that truck and loved it but we'll we're gonna talk about the LC we're gonna continue to talk about that car because I know you guys are on the fence if you're looking to buy one uh, you just don't know what year you don't know you knew used whatever that the case may be man I got you I got you I got you with my experience 
I would be the first person to tell you that this car is not worth the money. I'd be the first one to tell you. But hey, all this technology that they're making stuff now, it, man, it like, this is where the driving experience to me is huge, huge. I don't, I feel the disconnect on electric vehicles and some hybrid vehicles, I don't know, man. Like I, I like to always feel connected to my car and you just, the LC 500, V8, there's no lag anywhere. There's no turbo lag, there's no nut, it's just, power's always there. It drives, it handles phenomenal. I love that car and that is the most underrated car I think out there hands down because of the weird market you're gonna have people who want to go they want a faster car faster does not mean more reliable I'm telling you that right now that really signifies and just oozes quality and known for quality and I don't mean quality of only while you have the car under warranty and as soon as that warranty goes out you that car is guaranteed to be in the shop. You are not going to have that with the Lexus because that Lexus is going to drive. And if you do have issues, just take care of your car. You have to with every vehicle. You're still going to maintain your vehicle. Your car will last you. I promise you. And if it doesn't, if my car doesn't, I will be the first one to jump in here and make a video and say, man, my car did not last. I'll be the first one to tell you, like, man, I was wrong about Lexus. But so far, I that car just feels like it will just run forever. The performance is good enough. It really is. It's good enough for a reliable car. You know, when I started this YouTube vlog, I honestly, I think the very first video I posted on here was actually a barbecue video when I went to an event. Like this YouTube, I don't do it for money, it's obvious. I don't, I don't do this for money. I do it because I enjoy it and I'm learning. I'm learning more with my career of, it, you know, it's like until you do it, how are you gonna sit there and tell somebody or another company what they need to do? what works and what doesn't work if you haven't done it yourself. So with YouTube and long format videos and building a channel and stuff like that, I'm doing this for myself to not only connect with an audience and uh, you know, and, and even start the MagMade brand, but it's really to also to learn, uh, to help me grow and uh, listen, 48 years old. I'm gonna be 49 years old next weekend, 49 years old. My birthday's coming up. I have been in a creative field for 25 years and I'm still learning and I love to learn. I don't just sit back and do nothing on the weekends and play video games or golf. I like to still learn. Let's go back to the channel. First, the first video I put out was like a barbecue video. And because I have a long history with barbecue and the brand that I built before, obviously Magnate, but <clears throat> There's two passions that I have, and one is cars, one is barbecue. The two don't really mix. And if I was to just start putting barbecue content on this channel, I think I'd probably start losing a lot of you guys. Cause you know, let's just face it, a lot of people, a lot of you guys don't probably care about the barbecue stuff. You know, I'm born and raised in Texas. We've been cooking and grilling all about all my life. I literally have a commercial smoker in my backyard. How many people do you know have a smoker to that degree in their backyard and they live in a suburban neighborhood? So my plan is, I'm gonna start a second YouTube channel. That one's mainly, is all gonna be geared around barbecue. Whether, it, you know, outdoor cooking, a lot of, you know, smoking, not so much recipes. It's kind of like what I'm doing here with the car stuff. I have a massive wealth of knowledge around barbecue and I feel like I want to start. It's time to, after I sold my brand, I've kind of been laying low for literally three years. And now I do want to put some stuff out uh, around the barbecue. I don't want to add it to this channel, so that's why I am going to add a second YouTube channel. Introduce you to some of my barbecue connections and friends, and these are some of the, the best cooks in the world. Going to once in a while, we're going to go some barbecue events, 
Uh, maybe we'll do some barbecue tours with the fellas. Maybe we're going to review some stuff because I'm going to be the first one to tell you, as a guy who manufactured barbecue grills and very high-end grills, I'm going to tell my. I will come out and tell you which products suck, what to stay away from, and even even these big names that we all know. I have a lot of input. I feel like I could give out there to the just people who want to cook or maybe you just want to learn how to cook the most amazing steak you've ever had you're ever put in your mouth I can show you how to do that and what you exactly you need to make that happen uh, smoking briskets whatever I know there's a lot of that stuff that's out there but a lot of those people don't have the experience that I have actually running starting and running a business or a brand of barbecue grills, smokers, and even commercial smokers for restaurants. That was a big part of my life. I don't want to just walk away from that completely. Um, so we're going to start introducing a YouTube channel evolved around that, which I'll announce when that happens. I don't even know what the name of the YouTube channel is going to be, but I'm going to start filming my first content for that here shortly. So, but thank you guys. I appreciate every one of y'all. Like seriously, like if, if, if it weren't for you guys actually subscribing, I would not be making these videos. So, and I know it's been a learning experience, but because of all this, I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. And with that, I would like to say, please subscribe and like to this channel if you haven't done so already. It doesn't cost you a thing and it helps me out. So I appreciate that guys. Uh, and again, let's just you know keep everything going. I hope I could be an inspiration to some of you guys even think that's not too old to do stuff like this. If you wanna create a YouTube channel over something you're passionate about, do it. I'll be the first one to tell you, do it. It's not hard, you just gotta do it. And if you have questions, Anything I could ever help anybody out with, I am more than happy to help you out any way I can. So thank you guys. Until then, see you next week. Hey guys, one last thing before I get out of here. I know you can't really see this, but the MagMade shirts. I am experimenting with some uh, MagMade merch. Cause I just love this logo. I think it just looks, it's pretty sick. And kind of experimenting. Maybe we'll get a little store set up here uh, before long and you could buy, guys, you could buy some hats and t-shirts and just represent the brand, represent what we stand for and all that good stuff.